According to my gospel, every believer should speak in tongues and use the words, I worship you, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, your God in the earth today. The Holy Ghost is God in the earth today, and you walk with him by saying words. I'm glad you can join us. For the past several years, I have been preaching about Holy Ghost worship. I've been pre preaching about worshiping the Holy Ghost. Now, a lot of people don't understand that. I hear it all the time online. People will make comments or something, and it's like they have no idea what I'm talking about. What that says to me is that we need to have our minds renewed about the new reality of where we are, who we are, and what, what dispensation we're living in. The Holy Ghost is God in the earth today. So, when I say Holy Ghost worship or worshiping the Holy Ghost, so many people don't even hear what I just said. They hear what they think I just said. They have an idea that's already in their head so that when I present to them the idea of worshiping the Holy Ghost, it, they're, they're already go to a rabbit hole and they already have a uh, doctrine and an indoctrinated thinking that doesn't allow them to go there. It, it literally blocks them from going to the place of worshiping the Holy Ghost. They think it's something completely different. So I'll say one thing and they'll think I said something else or it'll register in their mind as something completely different. Frankly, what they want me to have said. But when I say I worship the Holy Ghost or worshiping the Holy Ghost, I don't mean the song portion of the service. I'll say, well, you got to worship the Holy Ghost and they'll say, oh, I love Holy Ghost worship. I mean, I love that part where we do all the singing. Or some of the people that might think they're even more advanced would say, oh, I, you mean the part where, you know, the, the organ just plays on one chord and everybody starts to speak in tongues together? Yo, I love that part. I, Holy Ghost worship. No, that might be worshiping in the Holy Ghost or worshiping by the Holy Ghost, but I'm not saying that. I'm not talking about worshiping by the Holy Ghost. I'm not talking about worshiping in the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about actually worshiping the living God who is the Holy Ghost. So when I say worshiping the Holy Ghost, I'm talking about worshiping the Holy Ghost. It is one reason I believe that the Holy Ghost gave me those words. He said, use the words, I worship you, Holy Ghost. If you actually use the words, I worship you, Holy Ghost, then you're doing what I've been talking about. If you aren't using the words, I worship you, Holy Ghost, then you aren't doing what I'm talking about, and you probably don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about knowing the Holy Ghost as God, and then worshiping Him as God, and using the words, I worship you, Holy Ghost, because you're God in the earth today. Now, it shouldn't be that difficult, but it is, like I said, because people's religious tradition and they're indo they've been indoctrinated in a way that does not allow them to go there. You, you want to try it out? I'm telling you, you, you go, and if you haven't been doing this, you go and you say and use the words, I worship you, Holy Ghost, and see what happens. Your doctrine is going to freak out. But if you continue down that line, because you can understand that by the scriptures, I've been preaching on this for years now, the scriptures specifically call the Holy Ghost God, and that he is the living God, and that we're supposed to worship the living God. And when you start to uh, w actually do it, he'll begin reordering your thinking, and he'll renew your mind to where you can actually walk with the Holy Ghost who is the living God in the earth today and that's what I'm talking about using the words I worship you Holy Ghost will correct all of those weird thinkings and I'm telling you it's weird people get weird over it no they're weird already but then they think I'm saying something that I'm not I'm specifically saying that you worship the Holy Ghost 
not by the Holy Ghost worshiping something else not some kind of worked up thing in a service where oh now we're in Holy Ghost worship no I'm specifically talking about worshiping the Living God who is the Holy Ghost who's God in the earth today I realize sometimes you know I I hear it in, in the way people say things or the, some of the comments that I get they're just not getting it and it's because their doctrine is blocking them off from it and won't let them go there but that's why you've got to use those words and break down that wall you know the Bible says that when the veils taken away then the Lord is that spirit the spirit is Lord and there's Liberty you begin to see things differently it seems like a foreign concept in the body of Christ that you should worship the Holy Ghost and yet he's the one with whom we have to do he's the one who's God in the earth today he is the Living God we should worship him and let's pray Holy Ghost I worship you I thank you that you are God in the earth today I thank you that I can walk with you as God in the earth today and be your temple and you can live with me and I can live with you and it's a great fellowship that we have together I worship you as God and I ask you to help the people that hear this message to know you as God and begin worshiping you as God in Jesus name amen so in 2nd Corinthians chapter 13 I don't know if I said that yet 2nd Corinthians chapter 13 and let's go all the way to the end this is the last thing that we have recorded that Paul or the Holy Ghost said to the Corinthians you can understand that right it's the last verse 2 Corinthians 13 and verse 14 said the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost it means close intimate fellowship and relationship with it's the Greek word koinonia it means living together living together with the Holy Ghost who in this verse of scripture the last thing that he said to the first, to the Corinthians who is a, is Paul telling these people they're going to have close fellowship and relationship with the Holy Ghost why he's the one that's in the earth he's the one with whom we have to do he is a person you don't have close intimate relationship with a thing he is a person he's a divine person he is the Holy Ghost he is the one with whom we have to do he's the one that Jesus sent in John 14 16 Jesus said he's going to send another one he said Jesus said I'm gonna go away and when I go away I'm going to send another one like me another one that you can have see they had close intimate fellowship with Jesus and then he went away and sent another one that they could walk with live with do you understand Holy Ghost is the one that Jesus sent he's the another comforter 2nd Corinthians 3 17 says now the Lord is that spirit now when now in our day and age the Lord is that spirit or the Spirit is Lord and where the Spirit is Lord there is Liberty and there is freedom who's who is the Lord the Spirit the Holy Ghost he is God in the earth today Jesus isn't in the earth the Father isn't in the earth they sent is this too hard to understand they sent the another they sent the Father and Jesus sent someone Holy Ghost where is he he's in the earth he's the one that we have to do with he's the one that we have intimate fellowship with he is God in the earth today and we should worship him and when I say worship the Holy Ghost that's what I'm talking about worshiping him the God that's in the earth today and use those words I worship you Holy Ghost that sounds strange it sounds strange because of your doctrine that you've been brought up that somehow didn't include that you've heard all the things that I've said before but you didn't carry them to the degree where he is God I should worship him first Corinthians chapter 12 verse 14 says all these worketh that one salvation is worked by that one that one who the Holy Ghost all the gifts of the Spirit all the things that are done in the earth today are done by 
that one and self same spirit as he wills who's God in the earth today the Holy Ghost this is a massive revelation and when I say the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you walk with him by saying words I'm not just making that up that took a long time to get to but it's where we are it's who we are it's where we stand it's how we live I hope you understand that he's the one with whom that uh, all these things worketh that one it's his dispensation from the time that Jesus left and sent the Holy Ghost into the earth until the time that Jesus returns it is the Holy Ghost's dispensation that means it's his time it's his age he's the one with whom we have to do and we worship him and when we worship him we will be able to go farther and better and we and frankly we won't be able to complete what we're called to complete if we keep holding on to this religious garbage that keeps us from this relationship with the Holy Ghost is this making sense so we walk with him by saying and speaking in agreement with his words Amos chapter 3 3 says how can two walk together except they be agreed and we know this all of these things that I've just said and more are available online you go to mhgs.org and you can download all of these messages I've been preaching on this for several years now and just it just dumbfounds me when I run into people who just have a wall up immediately that block that if you say I use the words I worship you Holy Ghost I worship the Holy Ghost that's like it's like so foreign to them and, and but to me now because I've, I've gone down this road I've thoroughly searched it in the scriptures and I've applied it to my life and I use those words all the time it's just so strange to me that they're so religiously indoctrinated in the in the direction they're going that they can't see that the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today then how are they gonna walk with him by saying words predominantly I worship you Holy Ghost should be some of the first words that come out of your mouth right are we not the temple of the Living God yes of course we are I'll go to first Corinthians chapter 6 1 Corinthians chapter 6 says what know you not that your body is the temple of who the Holy Ghost you'd swear that people didn't know that they're walking around with the Holy Ghost although they think that the Holy Ghost isn't necessarily God he's just sort of a force of you know uh, maybe particles of God somehow here it says what know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost in you which you have of God and you are not your own you are bought with a price therefore glorify or magnify or increase God in your body and in your spirit which are God's Holy Ghost is God he's in you you should glorify him now it says you're the temple of God now what do you suppose a temple of God is for well you would go to the temple of God to worship God right so if you are the temple of God what should the first thing you be doing you should be worshiping God first and foremost God who God the Holy Ghost who's in the temple are you getting this at all I hope so so he's the one with whom we have to do he's the one we have communication with you should have communication with him if he's what in your temple right he's there he's the one so worshiping him increases his ability and his favor to do things for you now you can't walk with God unless you're speaking in agreement with his word do you know that I said Amos chapter 3 3 let's go to the book of Acts and we'll see here on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost came into the earth you think okay well here's the Holy Ghost when he came in which means he must not have been here in that capacity because he came right Jesus sent him and so he came into the earth 
and he's going to now fill his temple his temple being the people that were receiving him and then he in order for them to walk with him they need to walk with him by speaking in agreement with his word so the Holy Ghost has this idea from the beginning of time this is what I'm gonna do when I go there he could have chose some other method he didn't but when he came in let's see what happened and when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from where from heaven so he came from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire and it sat upon each of them each of them every single one of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began it didn't say they ended it said this was the beginning Holy Ghost came in and they began to what speak they began to speak with other tongues what what's the very next verse as the Spirit gave them utterance genius beyond genius the Holy Ghost knows that the way for him to be able to walk with you and to speak things in agreement that you have to speak in agreement with him and for you to walk with him you have to speak in agreement he's gonna come and the first thing he does is give you words to say and they and the Bible calls that the beginning the beginning of what the beginning of the Holy Ghost dispensation the beginning of you walking with the Holy Ghost speaking words are you getting this is tongues speaking in tongues important yes it's hugely important the Bible calls it the beginning they began well I don't know if I'd call it the beginning well let's look and see at some other verses here Acts chapter 11 verse 12 uh, this is Peter talking and the Spirit bade me to go with them nothing doubting moreover these six brethren accompanied me and we entered into the man's house and he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house which stood and said unto him send men to Joppa and call for Simon whose sermon name is Peter who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all the house shall be saved and as I this is Peter speaking and as I began to speak the Holy Ghost fell on them as I, as on us what at the beginning here's Peter the Apostle Peter said that the beginning was when the Holy Ghost fell on them and they began to speak well let's look back up here it says as I began to speak the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning at the beginning Acts chapter 10 verse 44 while Peter yet spake these words the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word and they have the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles was also poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God how did they know the Holy Ghost came they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God that is the beginning the Bible calls it the beginning the beginning of what the beginning of receiving the Holy Ghost and walking with the Holy Ghost as God in the earth today now here he says that they uh, verse 46 for they heard them they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God what does magnify mean you ever have a magnifying lens what does it do oh it burns ants well maybe but it does other things you're able to see things it it enlarges things it expands things it draws a focus on something look what it says they heard them speak with tongues and magnify increase enlarge expand expands the influence of God it draws a focus on God God who I some of you who know uh, would know exactly what I'm gonna say some of you who have been religiously indoctrinated uh, still are not gonna get it the fact is speaking in tongues should magnify God in you should enlarge the influence 
of God the Holy Ghost in you and should draw focus on the Holy Ghost who's God in you to the point of worshiping him but your doctrine has cut you off from it I'm telling you praying in the Holy Ghost should lead you to worshiping the Living God who is the Holy Ghost who's God in the earth today ha 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 some people aren't gonna like that some people don't like me that but I don't care because the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and when I pray in tongues he's being enlarged he's being magnified according to my gospel every believer should speak in tongues and use the words I worship you Holy Ghost and I've got so much more to say on these things but let's focus on the speaking in tongues part a lot of people think that that is some huge revelation when the Bible calls it the beginning some people in some denominations and churches and you know what I'm talking about they'd be like oh you speak in tongues that's so advanced that's very very advanced someday I hope that I could one day maybe possibly speak a tongue for a half of a second the Bible calls it the beginning then then you've got the flip side of that same coin where you got people that speak in tongues think they are so advanced I'm so advanced because I speak in tongues and you don't both of those are wrong speaking in tongues is a vehicle it's the first thing the Holy Ghost did genius to enable you to speak his words into the earth and to advance with your relationship with him as God in the earth today so speaking in tongues should lead you should 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 lead you to worshiping the Holy Ghost the problem is most people's doctrine blocks them from that so their speaking in tongues has to go around that in fact you have to have and I'm telling you this because I have had religious instruction and indoctrination that blocked me from it and I got around that but you have to have in religious religious instruction and indoctrination for it to not lead you to worshiping the Holy Ghost he is God he came into the earth he has a personality he speaks words he has a will he does all of these things he's God in the earth today for you not to acknowledge him as God and worship him is you've been religiously brainwashed to go in some wrong direction he is God in the earth today and we are to magnify him so in order to walk with God we have to do what we speak words some of the words you should use you should worship God you are the temple of God get get with the program if you are the temple of God you should be worshiping God who is God he's the Holy Ghost he's the one Jesus sent he's God in the earth today you should use the words I worship you Holy Ghost. see there's no wiggle room around those words you should use these words use the words I worship you Holy Ghost there's no wiggle room around it you can't decide that worship is something else no you use words and you say I worship you Holy Ghost so in order for us to walk with God we had to have a change in our speaking what's the first thing at the beginning the Holy Ghost came into the earth and they began to speak differently right and it's no great big thing I mean it is a great big thing but it's not some great thing that's insurmountable it's literally the beginning and we begin from there he gives us the words to speak you see how this is a great idea I don't see how you could possibly make it work Holy Ghost He says well what I'll do is I'll go in and because they have to speak in agreement with me for things to happen I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna give them the words to speak that they don't even understand isn't this great it's the Holy Ghost's idea so in order for him to do anything in the earth he must have words spoken you do know this right I have more messages on this on faith online mhgs.org you can go down and download those messages on faith but the point is God has to have words to work with in the earth so his genius again is to come in and give you the ability to speak his words in order for him to do anything in the earth he must have words spoken right his words spoken in order for him to do anything for you listen to this preacher in order 
for God the Holy Ghost to do anything for you he must have words spoken he must have his words spoken he's not gonna change the system for you he must have words spoken to do anything in the earth that's how he started everything created everything now he's gonna give you the ability to speak his words again the genius of being able to speak in other tongues first Corinthians chapter 2 and let's just go down to verse 12 now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of God right we've received the Spirit of God that would be the Holy Ghost you understand this what happened when they received the Holy Ghost they began to speak words as he gave them utterance so they were his words and they began to speak his words remember I said and he can't do anything for you unless his words are spoken we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things freely given to us of God so God has all of these things that he wants to freely give to you and has already freely given to you but you don't know them yet look what he says that we might know the things freely given to us of God now if we're gonna know the things freely given to us the things the things the things freely given to us we've received the Spirit of God what happened when we received the Spirit of God we began to speak so we can know the things look what he goes on to say here now we have received not the Spirit of the world but the Spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God which things also we speak what things are we speaking the things that are freely given to us of God when you speak in tongues it's God's method for him to get things over to you and if you don't speak the things he can't get the things over to you you have to speak the whole thing out the problem is people are not speaking in tongues enough to get the whole thing out you know if I was had to speak out the design of this microphone here and I only wanted to speak about the grill part all you would end up with is the grill and and a, and a microphone that's dysfunctional it wouldn't function it wouldn't work it wouldn't do it but it, it I would need to speak out the entire design for it to work say the entire design see because people aren't speaking enough until Bible says they began to speak it didn't it, it, it beginning was the beginning which means there had to be a continuing once you be, fully speak it out that's it are you getting this but here we see this is God's method to get things over to you God who God the Holy Ghost he's God in the earth today you walk with him by saying words he gives you the literally gives you the exact words to speak you just need to speak them out which things also we speak verse 13 not in the words which man's wisdom teaches but which the Holy Ghost teaches Where'd you get these words from? The Holy Ghost is teaching you these words. Not man's wisdom, Holy Ghost wisdom. We're speaking the wisdom of God. Look up at verse 6. How be it we speak wisdom. Verse 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world. When did he ordain this? Yeah, people say oh, how do you know that he, the Holy Ghost came up with this method right here it says he he ordained this method before the world unto our glory speaking in tongues unto our glory not I spoke in tongues once but continuing 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 to speak unto our glory now there's a verse of scripture that says from glory to glory you understand so we go from one glory we speak to the next glory we speak so these are the things that we speak and this is the way the Holy Ghost teaches us is by speaking in agreement with him it is his number one method of provision let me say that again it is God's number one method of provision is to speak 
in agreement with his word we know that we can take we can take verses of scripture and speak them into our life but we can also speak even more accurately by the Holy Ghost speaking exact words and we get better and better at it into our life and he's able to do these things is this making sense we're speaking things it's his number one method I hear people all the time they say God help me God help me well he is the helper Jesus called him the helper that's another word for comforter I'll send you another comforter I'll send you another helper God help me what's his method what's his number one method by which he helps you is when you speak in agreement with him he is helping you when you speak in other tongues he is helping you so speaking in tongues requires no particular talent but simply a willingness to speak as he gives you the utterance you got to know about it first remember faith comes by hearing so I'm preaching and faith comes you should have more faith now in speaking in tongues than you might have had before right speaking in tongues requires no particular talent but simply a willingness to speak nobody can make you speak but a willingness to speak as he gives you utterance not saying what you want to say but learning how to speak in tongues as he gives you utterance I'll also put in here and continuing to speak a lot of people think and I know this is taught wrongly in many Pentecostal circus cir circuses many Pentecostal circles where once you've received the Holy Ghost that's it you know maybe every once in a while in some kind of a, a meeting you might be inspired you know in the worship section of the meeting where oh and it comes on you again that's not how it works he gives he's always 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 giving you a flow of the spirit the Bible calls it a river rivers are flowing all the time so he gives you the utterance and you continue to speak the Bible says the beginning remember Acts chapter 2 verse 4 they began to speak so there has to be a willingness to speak until this is the part where you lose everybody what do you mean a willingness to speak until a willingness to continue to enunciate the syllables that the Holy Ghost is giving you until you have the thing it's his method of bringing things to you hello this is the Holy Ghost method he came up with it from the beginning of time from the foundation of the earth I'm gonna come into the earth and give them the ability to speak words now you simply have to continue to speak them until the thing is manifest and that's where people fall off because they don't want to put any effort into it. it takes time speak until the manifestation of the thing desired shows up right and then there's the transformation of you so second we're in first Corinthians go to second Corinthians we're almost done second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17 now the Lord is that spirit who's the Lord that spirit and where the spirit is Lord there is freedom there is Liberty but we who's we that's me we means me we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed and that word change is the word metamorphosis everybody knows what that means right change from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord how's the Spirit of the Lord gonna do it he must have words so for you to be changed from one glory to the next you must speak words metamorphosis what does that make you think of a caterpillar or a butterfly yeah that's right so what do they do in order to be changed they have to separate themselves they go close themselves off somewhere right in a cocoon and then they're in there for a period of time until until the transformation takes place so we need to be speaking in tongues until we have to stay in the presence of God and worshiping the Holy Ghost and praying in other tongues until we're changed from one glory to the next glory and then we do it again to the next glory is this making sense 
we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord one glory we're not going backwards we're going forwards Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God God's having mercy on you that you present your body remember we talked about that earlier what is your body your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost now I'm gonna present my body what I'm gonna present my body to I'm gonna present my body to God the Holy Ghost as his temple now let me ask you what's one thing you should do if you do present your body to God the Holy Ghost as his temple Holy Ghost you are God and therefore I worship you I'm your temple that's what I do it's my thing what's your thing my thing is worshiping the Holy Ghost why is that because I'm the temple of God the Holy Ghost you getting this and I use the words I worship you Holy Ghost not only that but let's read on here present your body a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God God who God who it would have to be it would have to be God the Holy Ghost because you're presenting your body to him right which is your reasonable service it's a service that you're performing to God when you worship him right another another translation says spiritual worship it's your worship when you present your body to him now there is one particular part particular part of your body that is part of your body remember that you're supposed to present to God and it's over and over in the scriptures one particular part that he's very he's very interested in and that's the part that he was the most interested in right on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost came in he filled them and they all quivered their hands like this Woo! especially when they really liked the worship song it was like this and if it was a song they didn't like so much it was like this and then if it was a song that they really didn't know or like it was more like this are you here no but the Holy Ghost came into the earth and what part did he quicken their tongues that's the part you present to the Holy Ghost first and foremost you're presenting your tongue to him what was the beginning they began to speak with other tongues so you're presenting your body to him the tongue and you're not conformed to this world but verse 2 be ye transformed how's this gonna happen by presenting your body by presenting your tongue you will be transformed that you may prove what is the good acceptable and perfect will of God if you are going to prove the good will of God you're going to have to speak it out if you're going to prove the acceptable will of God you're going to have to speak it out and it takes longer than the good will of God are you here and if by some reason some of you want to prove the perfect will of God it's gonna take a commitment to speak out the perfect will of God and he'll be able to do it in your life and you'll be transformed from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord that he may live in you and walk through you people don't think that this is that important oh yeah I spoke in tongues once yabba 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 it was not that important they don't understand nor do I think they really know the Holy Ghost do you think that God thinks this is important it's the first thing he did and I've been showing you scriptures on this it's how he does things it's how he gets things that are given to you over to you you have to speak them fully should you think it's important and if you think it's important should you put some effort into it should you put some time into it I'm telling you you can't get to the to the acceptable and perfect will of God without putting the time in to speak his words into the earth and his words into your life you have to present your body to God a living sacrifice living sacrifice means you might have to do it even if you don't want to do it you understand 
anyway so let me pray for you Holy Ghost I thank you that these people are blessed I thank you that they've heard this word I ask you to fill them anew that they may speak and their utterance and their articulation would not stop where it was but would continue on to take them to a greater and greater place in the mysteries of God and the glories of God and let it be manifest on them in them and around them in Jesus name I worship you Holy Ghost you are God in the earth today Oh God.